Okay, now you can see here, over on the corner, you can see that um, the retopology mesh is quite angular, whereas the the mesh that it's the high resolution mesh is very curved there, and we want to make sure we respect that. So if I want to add in an additional edge loop there, I can hold down Control with my Points and Faces tool to get another edge loop, and then just click, and then I can move that into position. Now the problem is now we have this area of particularly dense topology, and I don't really want that, especially on the bottom of the mesh here. So, what I can do is I can actually split the difference between this polygon strip, which is quite wide, and this one, which is quite narrow. So I can go down here to my Slide Edges tool, and if I hold down Control, again, like with the Delete Edges tool, it'll select the entire ring, and I can just sort of slide that down. Now let's focus more on the mouth. So for this, probably the easiest way to do uh, most of this is just going to be with the, uh, the points and faces tool. Just going to click and make new points. I move this down a little bit. Now some things are important is that regardless of what sort of topology I have for uh, most of the mouth here, I do want to make sure that certain features like this tooth have a, a base of edges that go very cleanly all the way around it because that'll make retopologizing the rest of the tooth a little bit easier. So what I mean by that is that I just want to make sure that I have a very clean ring around the base of it. Now it's okay if it looks a little angular right now. It's important sometimes to remember how far away this is going to be in the context that it will be ultimately be used for. So this is for use in a top-down game from which the model will ultimately be about maybe this big on screen, maybe even a little bit smaller. So don't worry if the faceting, so you don't need to necessarily worry about uh, too much faceting, which is when you can see the angles between individual faces. This is also, even if you're not making a model for a game, if you're making a model for, say, an animated film where render time isn't as big of an issue as it is for games, it's still a good idea to model this way because you can later subdivide the model in order to get very uh, smooth in order to get very smooth edges and silhouettes without having to manually place all those polygons. So it's important, much like when we were sculpting the model, that you start off simple and work your way up or work your way up in detail. Now for the tooth, this has a total of one, two, three, four, I believe seven edges going all the way around it. I don't need to maintain that going all the way down. That's just going to give me more polygons than I really want. So what I'm going to start doing with this is that I'm going to click one point, and if I hold down shift, it'll force the new polygon to be a triangle. And now I have effectively collapsed that edge into a single point which will reduce the overall um, polygon count going around the tooth. I'll probably do that in two places right now, like maybe right there. And then I'll continue doing it as I see fit around the rest of the tooth.
because ultimately I do want this just to end with a single point. Okay, good demonstration time. So you see how I want to draw a quad between this edge and these two points, but the uh, points and faces tool isn't really letting me. The preview uh, polygon is only giving me this one triangle. If I use the quads tool, I can click on an edge and then click to the two points that I want a new quad to be formed and sort of force 3D coat to draw a quad there even if the points and faces tool isn't behaving properly. This is really useful especially in areas like this where you can't necessarily always see the polygons and points that you want to connect because sometimes the points and faces tool will only let you work with what it can actually see. So like right there you see it's not drawing the polygon that I want so I'll go in with my quads tool and I'll just start drawing it. And now we have only four edges going around instead of seven and so to finish this off I'll probably just draw points going to the very tip of the tooth. Now to make a triangle with the quad tool all I have to do is just double click in the same spot and it'll place both of those vertices right on top of each other and it will automatically merge them together. Alright, so our tooth is finished. Now it's important that we keep an eye on the uh, triangle count down here. So right now I'm at uh, 271 triangles and that is for just one side of this model. All right, that it does not include the mirrored half. So our actual triangle count once we apply the symmetry is going to be double whatever this number is. So right now we're at a little over 500 triangles, about 542 to be specific. Now for this model I'm going to try and keep the triangle count under uh, 4,000 which means that for this entire mesh I need that number to stay below 2000. So we're a little over one tenth of the way there. And remember the mouth is going to be the densest part of this as we move down especially into the tail where there isn't as much detail the overall uh, topological density is going to be much lower. Okay, so now it's time to tackle the situation involving the teeth here. We'll be using a little bit, we'll be using an interesting technique in order to accommodate those while keeping our polygon count as low as possible. 